Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. No matter what you're struggling with, remember, the body can get sick. It can also get well. It is about lifestyle, so the choices we make every day, they matter. And we want to help you get there. Lewis in Baltimore, Maryland, he says, I'm 76 and I suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. I take pain meds. But I still hurt, and some days can barely move my fingers. Do you know of anything that can help? A couple of things can really help. I'll tell you, one of the big issues that we see with this, and, and it, it really, with rheumatoid, it's a, it's a challenge for a lot of people, but one of the things we see that's, that's important is that you've got to figure out what arm of the immune system is active. So when you're talking about rheumatoid arthritis, you're talking about the different arms. So you got the T1 arm, the T2 arm. Okay, there's two sides of the of the immune system, and one gets real active and one gets dormant. And there's ways to figure that out. We have some testing that you can do to figure that out. Once you figure those levels out, you can kind of calm down the active one and and moderate the other side. Okay, and that's what keeps it. That's like the dimmer. What I call the dimmer switch. Putting a dimmer switch on autoimmune condition like rheumatoid. To where you can't just get rid of it, but you can keep the symptoms at bay. And that's one of the biggest keys that you have to look at. All right, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. So glad you're with us. If you haven't found a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, all this nutrition and lifestyle-based care we talk about, go to the website. Easily find someone there that can help you thrive and make it, help you go to the next level, help you get to what you need for your health. That's the key. We want to help you get there. Let's get to the phones and talk to Adam. Hi, Adam. Simply wanting to know, uh, the other night talking about whey protein, and I, uh, you know there are a lot of different choices of whey protein in the stores, and I was wondering what is the best. Uh, I have had a gastric bypass, and I still have to take uh, pro, uh, protein, and I found that the best sources are goats milk, cheese, and whey protein. So uh, if you could, just tell us uh, which would be the best kind. Sure, I can. I, I really like, we, we have, my favorite is is whey protein and pea protein. I like those. I think they digest well. Depends on the quality. Quality is very important. We have a product called 365X, and if you go to our website, you can see it there, and it's got everything in it. So I, I talk about having a good protein powder. It's got organic protein in it. And it's got a lot of cofactors, vitamins and minerals. It also has uh, omega-3 fats in it. It's got enzymes and has uh, healthy bacteria in it. So it's got everything. I talk about my foundational four a lot. That's the a good whole food multivitamin, digestive enzymes, probiotics, and fish oil. And it has all that, all that in there. One scoop a day. And it has the powder, too. So if you go to the website, you can find it there. But it's it's a powerful tool to be able to have the right kind of protein. I use them every day because you can only eat so much food. And if you're on the go and busy with schedule, then it helps. And the quality of protein is easy to digest, very easy to keep in your system that does well. So that's one of the keys that you really want to look at in, in giving your body access. to you have the right kind of foods in the right manner, in the right way, so you can, you can eat and, and do well, okay? Because that's the key. It's lifestyle at the end of the day. And your protein, chicken, fish, beef, and eggs, I like getting solid foods, but adding those from, now goat milk, they make goat milk protein, by the way, like a goat milk whey, it's pretty good. And uh, and there's an egg white they make in the whey, or in a powder. But I still like the pea and the whey. And if it's whey, it's gotta be grass fed, it's gotta be organic, hormone free. Gotta have all that, okay? As well as the pea protein, it's gotta be organic. Those are going to be your best options there, okay? 888 You Give us a call or go to the website. I always love to hear from you. If you haven't joined social media with us, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, got to check us out there as well. All right, so childhood tummy aches can be tied to adult anxiety, depression, etc. So stomach pain is a common childhood complaint. Now new studies suggest it may place some kids at higher risk for anxiety disorders or depression 
as adults. Researchers looked at about 330 young adults aged around 20 who had abdominal pain as children to 147 participants who did not. And of those who suffered from stomach pain, 51% had an anxiety disorder during their lifetime. 30% had one currently. And by contrast, 20% of adults without stomach pain had an anxiety disorder. A decade later, individuals who had stomach pain continued to have high rates of anxiety disorders, even if they no longer had stomach pain. The study was done recently, and more and about 40% of young men and women who had abdominal pain as children had depression during their lifetime. 16% of adults who didn't have stomach pain, according to the study, was dealt with depression as well. So exactly how stomach pain and anxiety were linked is not clear, but anxiety related to the pain or even anxiety related to other things in the child's life. So here's the deal, okay? Our brain is directly affecting our gut. There's a, the, the vagus nerve, they call it almost like the, the connecting point between the brain and the gut. We've heard about the gut-brain connection, right? So you think about something, you get nervous, your stomach gets all messed up. Well, that's the case. It can happen a lot. And you know, one of the keys we've got to look at is how that, that impact. And as a child and even younger, even a, an adolescent, maybe hard to process emotions. So you hold, you don't really have all the, the, the facts and the ability to rationally go through things. It's very difficult. And so a lot of people hold it in. They don't know how to process And when you hold things in, no matter what it is, then you have issues within your gut and it goes directly to your gut. That's why people can either eat a lot when they get stressed out or they don't eat at all. They just shut down. Very common. And you notice that the appetite changes once life changes. And it really can make a a big difference and, and play a big role. So we're learning here that stomach pain and anxiety really go hand in hand. There's a lot of children who have these issues and that later on in life, deal with anxiety or depression it's just really tragic and it's very very sad it's one of those things that you never want to see a child go through ever you don't want to see anyone go through that for that matter to ever go through something like that but it does happen and of course everything we can to support and help along the way triple eight two eight three seven two seven two that's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two lines are open with questions about your health give us a call or go to the website We're here for you each and every day, no matter what you're struggling with, diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, fibromyalgia, the list goes on and on, so you can go on and on. You've got to make better choices. That's what it comes down to. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. It comes down to choices that we make every single day, and on this show, we want to help you make good ones. Coming up, I've got some tips on fat loss, also anxiety and depression, some natural ways to support that, plus what... I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at MChapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888 Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. We're here for you. Each and every day, no matter what you're struggling with, remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. So our lifestyles are medicine in so many different ways. And so what kind of choices are you making? And if you haven't made good ones, the good news is you can always make changes, right? That's the key. Hope is our medicine. Every single day, that's what makes the difference. Sarah, you're next with us. How can I help, hon? I'm 75. I'm retired from teaching. I have just been given by my doctor a notice that my blood sugar, blood glucose is up. 
and I wonder what I can do immediately to prevent diabetes uh, or to at least uh, slow it, slow down the progression of what may happen in the future. Well, you just have to, the, the deal is this, okay, first of all, you're young, right, still young, and so you, you've got the... The game changes when we start getting to a point where we get these these warning signs from our doctor, right? So you got to make sure that you just you get in the game. Your eating habits are going to be number one. Okay, I've got to tell you this: in ninety percent of the time, you're going to have to do really great. There's no more playing around, no more joking around. It's serious. Okay, when the blood sugar starts getting messed up, then that means that your habits have not been good, and your body's not getting what it needs. So, getting someone to manage that is going to be important. You've got to do multiple meals throughout the day, five to six meals a day, and you've got to do equal amounts of lean protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, low glycemic carbs in the form of fruits and vegetables, and then good healthy fats, almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados. All that makes a big difference for your health. And it also makes a big difference on how well your body's going to react, okay? Because your fats and your proteins – when you eat that in a meal, that stabilizes blood sugar. The carbohydrate can make it go up and down, and that's what you're trying to avoid, right? You're trying to get everything balanced so that the pancreas don't have to work as hard to send out the hormone. And so, and that's that's a big deal. So we want to make sure that we get that balanced out as much as possible. Now, the other thing, too, you got to look at, and this is super, super, super important, is to make sure you're giving your body the right kind of nutrition, okay? It can't just be junk food. It can't just be, well... As long as the portion size is right. No, there's a whole list of foods you can have that really do help with blood sugar. It does help with it. You can go to the website, inshapenetwork.com, and and find all that there. And that can make a big difference. It really can. It can support you in a great way, which is vital to, to have that. But, yeah, that's that's a big key. And then exercise is next. I'm telling you, these are the basics. You're thinking, well, duh, of course i got to exercise. But people don't think about that for blood sugar. They don't think that... If you're exercising on a regular basis, it's going to affect that, but it does. And it affects it in a major way, giving your body the things that it needs to really do well and thrive. So you have to get that in. And your eating habits matter, but your, and your exercise habits matter. And then, believe it or not, rest. If you're not getting good sleep and if you're overly stressed, it throws your blood sugar levels all over the place. I've seen people that are highly stressed out in, in the clinic. Our doctors have we've treated people that are highly affected by blood sugar levels. I mean, it's a big deal. And so, you know, making that happen is extremely important to get people where they need to be. Big deal, that's for sure. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call or go to the website. You have Crohn's disease or have you ever dealt with it? It's a big deal really is. So Crohn's disease is kind of like that end stage. If you have irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, it's kind of where the body is not digesting. There's a heavy amount of inflammation in the digestive system and the body is not handling everything well. So you want to get everything functioning as well as you can. And that's that's one of the big keys. So that's one of the the, the big areas that you need to look at. And with Crohn's, your daily habits matter. Now, now, it's heavily influenced by your brain chemistry, the way you think. If you get sad, depressed, stressed out, whatever, that can play a role in the gut, and it can definitely make an impact. But there's ways to help with Crohn's disease that are, are very important, and you've got to look at some of these. So if you're doing some of these habits and you need to modify them, I would encourage you to look at that. All right, number one, here's how to rebalance your life if you're dealing with Crohn's. Number one, don't smoke. It is a big one, all right? Smoking makes Crohn's much, much worse. And Dr. Miguel Ruggiero, who is at the University of Pittsburgh, he said, if you are if you have Crohn's, he's, a, he's a, a GI doc. He said, if, if you have Crohn's and you're a smoker, you have to quit. There's no option. People with Crohn's who smoke have more flare-ups and emergency surgeries than anyone else. So to be diagnosed with Crohn's in the first place is a big deal. Smoking is only going to add to it. Only drink in moderation is the other one. So alcohol can irritate the lining of your intestinal tract and exacerbate the Crohn's. So it can also interfere with medications you're taking. So if you ever find yourself to tolerate alcohol, you want to really limit that if you're dealing with Crohn's. Now, and, and, and again, 
I, I say if it's one of these, just totally don't do it. I mean, if you want the Crohn's to heal, which hopefully you do, you don't want to have to take medications forever. Remicade and all that. What a nightmare, right? So if you can if you can get your body to to balance naturally with your lifestyle habits, man, just get some discipline. Suck it up and, and make it happen. The other one for Crohn's is regular exercise. Both aerobic activity and resistance training can benefit the Crohn's treatment. Exercise not only helps your digestive tract to work more effectively, but it's a huge stress reliever, and that stress reliever can make a big difference in Crohn's because they go hand in hand. And practice relaxation techniques like uh, Tai Chi, yoga, all that's great. Get enough sleep. If you're reduced in sleep, you're going to cause Crohn's to flare, and that's, that's a big deal. You want to seek out support, too. Crohn's support groups online or, or groups that meet face-to-face can be very helpful. You know people going through the same thing you are. So a lot of things you can do to support Crohn's. It's a big deal, and people struggle with it all the time. So I encourage you to get some help that you need so you can really thrive in your health. Crohn's is a big deal, but you can overcome it, and you can move past it, and you can do well. You just don't want to get stuck in it. 888-283-7272. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, it's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. To find out more, visit the show online, InShape Network. Every single day, we want to see you thrive, not just barely get through it. There's so much more in life that you can do to do well. If you have diabetes or know someone that does, food is everything. I don't know if you realize that, but food's food's your medicine. Matter of fact, one of the reasons you get diabetes is because of the foods. And the wrong kind of foods each and every day, that's what really brings things down to uh, the biggest challenge, and uh, if, if you don't get that handled, it's not a free-for-all anymore. If you have diabetes, you can't just eat whatever. You really shouldn't just be eating whatever, whenever anyway. You should always be focused in on what your body wants, what it can handle. But that's a big deal, okay? The diabetes is a, is, a, is a real challenge for a lot of people because you don't really know. And there's no one guiding you a lot. And what you should be eating, kind of food you need, all that kind of jazz. So, super important. So, here's some of the processed foods that people with diabetes actually have. Okay, number one, chicken nuggets. You want to stay away from any type of the processed chicken, and wherever that is, wherever you're getting it from. The grilled ones, if they're organic and hormone free, are fine. But just regular chicken nuggets, they they can really because of the heavy breading. It's on them. Throws the it just throws the blood sugar into skyrocket big time. White rice. It's inexpensive and easy to cook, but it's like white bread and white pasta. It does the same thing. As far as raising blood sugar, loaded with preservatives a lot of time, and it really can impact the the blood sugar levels. So go with brown rice. It's a better alternative. The brown rice still has a lot of the uh, the fiber in it, and that's what creates the slower release of blood sugar, and doesn't cause the big spike. And the blood sugar, and that's that's a big deal. French fries. So we know that it's fatty. They've got a lot of fats in there, trans fats specifically. 
they may taste good, but they're not great for you. And if you have diabetes, it just makes everything go through the roof. They're made from the white potatoes. Think about switching over to sweet potato fries if you're going to do fries and bake them so they're not fried in the oil. You can make some at home. They actually pre-make them. They're organic and all that. You can get them at a lot of the kind of the health, healthier food stores. You can find those in the frozen section where they're pre-done. It's an easy way to get that in. A lot of the canned fruit, just steer clear of it. Get get a piece of, get an orange. Don't get it in the little containers with the syrup in it. Too much sugar. And it just throws everything off. You don't want to do too much fruit anyway. If you got diabetes, you just don't want to do a whole lot of that because the fructose, there's been some studies on that where it can impact the blood sugar in a negative way. And And we're learning more and more about that. Vegetables are going to be your best bet for your carbohydrate sources or higher fiber foods like peas, beans. Those are great. Now, potato chips, one you want to steer clear of just because no matter how you make them, no matter if they're organic, I mean, here's the deal. The way they're processed, they're going to jack the blood sugar up, okay, no matter how you eat them. There's no low glycemic chip that's going to do that. Sodas, that's a given, all right, too, too much sugar. And even the artificial sweeteners now they found triggers enough in the brain that it still has this, it triggers the, the body that it thinks it's sugar. And so your body still releases the insulin. Crazy, right? Foods with high fructose corn syrup is another one. So a lot of ketchup, jams, jellies. Just look on the labels. Steer clear high for a high fructose corn syrup. Everybody says, oh, it's no big deal. It's a big deal. Body can't handle it that well. And I think it's one of the main contributors to a lot of the obesity uh, of having it, having it so much in our food supply. Processed meats, another one. Be clear of those because they've got a lot of the nitrates. They can impact blood sugar. They have sugar in them, especially when they're like honey glazed and all that. So steer clear of that. Fast food hamburgers. Some of them, I'm actually impressed with Hardee's. Uh, if you know Hardee's and then, of course, on the East Coast, it's Hardee's. On the West Coast, it's it's Carl's Jr., right? Same company. But I'm impressed with those guys. Let me just talk about it for a minute because, you know, I, I travel a lot. And I saw a sign one time for what I thought. I thought, like, to the double take, right? It's like Scooby-Doo. It's like, huh? So I looked at a sign, and it said grass-fed burgers only at Hardee's. <laughs> I said, Really? So I pulled up to a Hardee's and, and went up to it, and I thought, okay. So they have a grass-fed burger that's hormone-free at Hardee's. And so I was really impressed by that, all right? So you get rid of the bun, processed, and you get they, they make it. They can make it with lettuce and all. Now, is the lettuce perfect? No, but is, I mean, the, the burger itself grass-fed at a fast food place? Pretty impressive for this day and time, especially for that, so... Hardee's and Carl's Jr. actually have that. Burgers are not that great. Fast food, I mean, the ones you make at home are fine. You get good quality meat. Bison burgers, all that stuff is phenomenal. But you just want to steer clear because there's a lot of preservatives and byproducts in a lot of these meats that can cause the blood sugar to to rise. And that's what you have to be careful with. So there's some tips that can really help all the way around. Let's get to the phones and talk to Amber. Hi, Amber. I was wondering about dieting based on blood type um, and if that would be a way to help combat uh, the onset of type 2 diabetes well there's there's mixed reviews on that okay there, there's people that think and there's scientists that believe that the, the blood type diet has a lot of validity to it it's been around for a long time it's been repackaged a lot, but the theory and the research has been around for a long time. And there's people that, that say it works really well. For diabetes, there's some core principles, all right? I'm not here to really debunk that or not. I, I'm not a big fan. I don't utilize that in any of our clinical practice or any of our uh, any of our coaching or, or work. I think balance is the key. The body tends to do balance. I think there can be food allergies and whatnot, but if you clear the body out and get it digesting well, that's one of the bigger keys. In something like this where you're, you're looking to deal with whether it's diabetes or heart disease or whatever, and your food intake, it matters, the blood type. For example, if you, if you balance your foods out and you give the body what it needs, usually it's going to work well. And that's, again, some people handle certain foods better than others. I get that. But that's, that's one of the main things you want to look at and, and work with here is to get it more on the on the balance side and for example with with diabetes every meal needs to have a protein like chicken fish beef or eggs a fat like the healthy fats like almonds walnuts cashews avocados all that kind of thing 
and then you can have a carbohydrate. So if you had like a, a sweet potato, but you had a chicken breast with it and maybe a handful of almonds, all that's plus the fiber in the sweet potato, you're going to help to regulate blood sugar, and the blood sugar spike is not going to be that high. That is how you work with diabetes more than anything else. It's all about how the body is regulating and managing the sugar day to day, meal to meal. So it can't just be hit and miss. It can't just be every now and then. You really have to stay on it and get the body doing a it's, it's in, and get the body doing its work. It can't just be hit and miss. That's the big key with it. You've got to have everything as balanced as possible. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Give us a call or go to the website. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, all this nutrition and lifestyle-based care that we talk about, you know, it's all at the website. Go there. And we got original health programming. So if you haven't seen a lot of the original programming, you can go there and easily find it and get connected with us. So we want to see you do well. We want to see you thrive. We want to see you really go to that next level. And a lot of times we get stuck. And so we're building other shows, original radio, podcast, television programming, to bring you the kind of health content that you need to really get you to thrive. And that's what we want to see for you every single day. Paula in Boulder, Colorado. So I've started a new workout routine. I want to build a little muscle mass. Are protein shakes a good idea? Well, I think they are. And protein shakes themselves are are beneficial. And I, I think they we use them, of course, clinically with our coaching. And I use them personally. I'm a big fan. I, I probably do three a day. But, yeah, around workouts, the, the, some of the best protein-rich sources around workouts to help the body function and thrive and do well. But, yeah, you've got to give the body what it needs. That's the key. And if you if you give the body what it needs, it really does. It thrives and it does it does really well. If you take away from the, what the body needs, then it can be a real challenge. So the protein shakes gives is an easy way to get the right kind of quality protein. My favorite is 365X. If you go to our website, you can see it there. 365X is a, is a great one. It can make a huge difference. And it can really... It's got everything in it. That's why I like it. It's got vitamins. It's got full multi-mineral, multivitamin in it. has pro- probiotics. It's got enzymes. It has your omega-3s. I mean, all that in one scoop a day. It's a great way to go. It's the, it's the best shake, I think, to start your day with because it has everything in it. It even has brain chemistry support for the next workout. And that's what causes a lot of the, the hypertrophy or the growth in the muscle and can really make a difference overall. So if you want to transform your body and transform your health, then yeah, that makes that makes a big difference overall. Just to give the body everything that it needs to really do well. Cuz that's the key. At the end of the day, you want to you want to make sure when it comes to our health, you want to make sure you're getting everything you need. When it comes to our health, you want to begin want to make sure you're you're giving everything your body can to function and to thrive and to do great. And you can. You don't have to be stuck. It's what we love to see. We love to see people do Really, really well. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. If you haven't found a lifestyle provider, let us know. We've got someone in your area that believes the same way we do. And if you haven't visit our clinics, the Center for Lifestyle Medicine in Atlanta, Georgia, you better come by and say hello. We sure would love to have you. And just stop by and see us. Or in Blue Ridge or down in Miami, Florida. Other clinics are coming this year. We'll be right back. Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at inshapenetwork.com. Right here. 
here with you each and every day. You know, so many people struggle with their health. They, they have heart disease, diabetes, want to lower blood pressure and figure it out. But no one's eating the right kind of foods. This is one of the biggest pieces that we find. And about 1.5% of Americans are eating their fruits and vegetables. Do you know that? All this talk about fruits and veggies, and we don't eat them hardly at all. And I'm telling you, I can go through days, especially my travel days, if I'm not careful, and you can, like, not eat any. And it just depends. But there were Californians actually ate the most out of all the states. They kind of did a ranking of all the states, and they found that Californians ate the most. Tennessee and Mississippi ranked in the lowest in terms of people eating enough fruits and veggies. Come on, guys. The authors of the study published in the CDC's Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report called for a widespread action to promote fruits and vegetables in the average diet. Substantial new efforts are needed to build consumer demand for fruits and vegetables through competitive pricing, placement, and promotion in child care, schools, and grocery stores, communities, and work sites. It's the first time that researchers have been able to break down the fruit and vegetable consumption on a state-by-state basis, and they're really getting a lot of good information. So the CDC's Obesity Prevention and Control Branch, fruits and vegetable consumption has been consistently low over time, and this is just the first time we've been able to look at it on a state level. America needs a culture shift to get more people eating right. I totally agree with that. That's what we're hopefully doing with our show here. There's a perception that fruits and vegetables are more expensive than other foods. And it's not accurate. We just have to get in the habit of replacing some of those foods who normally eat with fruits and vegetables, right? It's not hard to do. I mean, if you add in a spinach salad, if you add in vegetables to your meals, if you get a big Vitamix blender or something like that and and start blending your vegetables, you can get them in. Eating a good amount of colorful fruits and vegetables is important because they help lower a person's risk of chronic illness like obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes, and fruits and vegetables are generally, I mean, a good thing about them, they're loaded with vitamins and minerals. They've got tons of fiber. They're low in fat, okay? Helps with cholesterol, with the fiber. And we're seeing that a lot's going to happen. The, the type 2 diabetes is skyrocketed. Cardiovascular disease is on the rise more than ever. And on average, Americans tend to eat fruits maybe once a day and vegetables fewer than two times a day. The state-by-state percentage of people who eat enough vegetables range from California and Oregon were at the top. Mississippi and Tennessee were at the bottom. People eating fruit ranged at different percentages, but average in the very low ranges. So you got to really, we got to do something. Smoothies, I like smoothie ideas. They're talking about that in the study. They're like, blend it, juice it, do whatever you got to do to get it. I, I think it's just the powders are good too. There's some really good companies. We're, we've got an organic fruit and vegetable powder. I think that's a great option. If you're not getting your stuff in every day, it's a great way to make sure you are. I mean, that's just no way around it. You just got to make sure that that you're getting your greens in. You got to make sure. That's the one big thing I, I focus in on. If, I, if I'm traveling and I'm out, if, if you can at least get those greens in, man, it is just vital. That's like lifeblood of getting the greens. Because it gives you so much. It's got so many... Anti-cancer properties, amazing. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Give us a call or go to the website. Let's get to the phones and go to Rachel. Hi, Rachel. And I was calling to ask, why do my feet have tingling and burning? I do have diabetes. I was wondering what caused that or where it come from. Well, the tingling and the burning is typically what we call a neuropathy, and the diabetes can can contribute to that. Blood sugar levels over time can affect the nerves and and cause this neuropathy type sensation in the body. And so you just have to really get in and and figure out ways to nutritionally support that. Now one is to support your blood sugar levels all the way around, okay? That's that's a big one. So you can sort support blood sugar levels, get those healthy, and then that can make a, a real strong impact. The other thing too that you have to look at and this is this is a big challenge is making sure that you're giving your body everything that it needs nutritionally so with diabetes the, the way you got into diabetes was not eating the right kind of food so if you start regulating blood sugar levels then that can make a big difference and that's what we would encourage you to do uh, with this 
is to make sure you're giving you're, you're eating that. So you can use things like chromium picolinate, vandal sulfate. You can use alpha lipoic acid. You want to make sure that you're doing uh, uh, vitamin B6. Pyridoxine is textbook for supporting any kind of tingling or numbness going down to the leg. All that can make a difference. So you got to get everything as balanced as possible to give the body what it needs to be able to thrive. But yeah, that all that matters, every bit of it. And, and with neuropathy too, the cool thing is, is that you can have some type of, of care done that's non-surgical that really does make a difference. So chiropractic medicine and some physical therapy can help. So both of those rehabilitation, rehabilitative type medicine, physical medicine is, is a great way to get that done and can, can really get everything kind of going in the right direction. But that's a huge key. Okay. Have to get the body into balance. And with something like a neuropathy, you just got to give the body what it needs. And through manipulative type work, because the nerves that come into the base of the, of the lower part of the spine go down into the legs and into the feet. And if you can get that worked on and handled, then along with good nutrition and, and the right support there, the body can recover in an amazing way. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer, Jay Patrick, engineer John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Where we're diagnosing hope one person at a time. Do you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the AsaRx audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.